Hello everyone. I'm Srinath Nidhi. I'm a principal solution architect at AWS. Today I'm joined by my colleague Venkat. Venkat, can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hello everyone. My name is Venkat. I'm a senior partner solutions architect here at AWS uh, focusing on SAP. Thank you Venkat. Today we are here to talk about uh, securing SAP workloads on AWS. Uh, Venkat, can you give us a brief uh, overview of uh, what layers or levels of protection is available uh, for SAP customers on AWS? Absolutely. So SAP systems uh, being the most mission critical applications for all, almost all the customers, yeah. uh, it is very essential that you protect uh, all the layers of um, your SAP systems uh, when you host them on AWS. Got it. Um, so if you look at it, you have um, aspects like um, infrastructure protection, uh, which, which involves uh, your host level boundaries, mm -hmm. your data protection, uh, your network protection, and then you also have endpoint protection. Sure. Um, and coupled with that, you also want to protect your access to SAP system. So SAP application protection itself is another aspect. So these are the various um, layers where customers will need to focus on when protecting their SAP systems. And um, important part is that AWS offers many services in this security space to let customers securely design SAP applications covering all these areas that I've just mentioned. Got it, that's very good to know about uh, various levels of production available so customers can take advantage of those. Uh, just curious, can you double click on uh, the infrastructure uh, protection that you just mentioned and share more details on sure, it? Sure, absolutely. Um, so when I talk about infrastructure protection, as I mentioned, uh, first we can look at it um, as um, starting from your host boundary protection, right? Yeah. For example, you have your HANA database that's mm -hmm. installed in EC2 instance, um, and then you have your SAP applications uh, installed on, um, again, EC2 instances. So the best practice here is, like you see in this architecture, you have a customer VPC, yeah. Um, and then within the customer VPC, you create private subnets. Sure. So private subnets are ones which do not have access, or which cannot be accessed from uh, outside this VPC, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the reason why we separate uh, your database and SAP applications into separate private subnets is to minimize the blast radius and to provide a certain level of isolation between the components. Um, and uh, when it comes to protecting the private subnets, or the actual EC2 instances where your SAP systems are running. We have several AWS features that are available. I'll uh, mention a few. Sure. Um, so for example, you have something called security groups. Okay. Uh, these security groups can be uh, thought of as firewalls at the EC2 instance level, mm -hmm. using which you can allow the required network access to these EC2 instances, meaning you have the option to choose the ports okay. and the source IP addresses from which your network can reach these EC2 instances. Uh, so that gives you a very good uh, level of protection. And then uh, at the subnet level, you have something called uh, network access control lists, okay. or NACLs as they are referred to as. And again, this also provides you the ability to either allow a certain uh, traffic or deny a certain traffic. And you can create multiple rules within these NACLs. Mm -hmm. And based on the weightage of each of these roles, rules, uh, your network traffic would be assessed and allowed or denied accordingly. So that is how you protect your um, you know, host level boundaries. Okay. Right? And at the VPC level, you have something called VPC flow logs. Um, and these flow logs gives you the ability to analyze your network traffic within sure. your VPC. So you, you can clearly identify what is the source of these calls that are coming into your VPC, like your IP addresses, the nature of the call. Um, so that gives you the ability to understand the network access patterns within your VPC. So that, that is a good feature that customers um, usually take advantage of to understand uh, what's going on in their uh, VPCs. Okay. So that is um, so that covers the host boundaries, uh, your uh, private subnets, public subnets, uh, and the VPCs. Um, and then um, the other aspect is a data protection sure. right, within the infrastructure protection. Mm -hmm. So data protection uh, can be achieved in two ways. One is protecting your data, which is at rest. Mm -hmm. So you can encrypt data at rest by using AWS uh, KMS service, right? Sure. Key management service. Got it. So that is. Um, 
one uh, you know aspect or one service that customers leverage um, uh, to protect the data at rest. Yeah. This means any EBS volumes that are encrypted by KMS, mm -hmm. KMS keys, are uh, pr basically the data that is trans uh, transferred between the HANA or your EC2 instances and your EBS volumes uh, are, is fully encrypted basically. Sure. Right? So that's how you achieve that. Um, and then you have uh, data protection in transit. Yeah. So for that you can use um, um, you know, certificate based encryption for data um, in transit and um, you have a service called a, you know, uh, AWS Certificate Manager using which you can actually um, you know, uh, encrypt your data in transit. Got it. Uh, so that is, uh, that is how you can uh, you know, kind of manage your data protection. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then uh, the way you can actually protect, um, uh, let's say, the access, like the uh, you know, endpoint protection, right? yeah. access to your SAP systems. Uh, the way uh, typically how this is architected is you have an application load balancer that's okay. installed in your public subnet. Sure. So public subnet is something which uh, is accessible from your internet, all right? Uh, and because you have uh, your ALB installed here, the endpoint for this ALB is uh, accessible to users. Okay. And when it comes to aspects such as SAP Fiori, for mm -hmm. example, where you want to, um, you know, publish certain applications in Fiori, um, you you would want the Fiori app, Fiori that's running on your SAP systems protected in itself, mm -hmm. um, and then only expose the ALB uh, to your public, okay. and have uh, your ALB talk to your SAP Fiori, which is installed on your backend systems. Got it. And then your ALB in itself is protected by um, you know services like WA. Okay. Your uh, web application firewall lets you actually monitor the HTTP and HTTPS traffic, mm -hmm. uh, and thereby it can, you, your traffic is protected before even you reach your ALB. Um, and another service um, is your Amazon Shield. Okay. Um, so Shield is uh, another service that gives you uh, protection against DDoS um, attacks, right? Uh, so that is another service that customers can leverage. Okay. Um, I know this is a lot of information. Yeah. Uh, but in addition to this, we have several other services like you have Amazon, uh, data, uh, you know, Amazon Data Guard yeah. or Amazon uh, Network Firewall. Uh, so these these services actually help protect all these components uh, which are involved in uh, running an SAP system and uh, kind of uh, you know host a secure SAP workload on AWS. Thank you so much. Uh, this is really cool and you covered a lot of components, services that are available and that the customers can leverage. Thank you so much for uh, spending your time with us and then walking us through this detailed information. Uh, to everyone that's watching this video, please, uh, use, please refer to the links that we have mentioned in the description to get more information about these services and double click on to them. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we are happy to uh, work with you and then help you to understand AWS services better. Thank you so much for watching this today. Have a good day. Thank you.